a USB rechargeable LED headlight. I'm going to call it a LED headlight because that's what they say on it. It could have different names in different countries. LED head torch, for instance. The reason for choosing this particular one is because I noticed that the Chinese manufacturers are having a bit of a pissing contest as to who can fit the most LEDs in the front. And at the time of buying this, this was the one that had the most LEDs. It's got a total of nine, three in the middle, and then three either side, and they light up in various sequences. I, I'll show you it later, in fact. So when you press the button here, the middle light lights, I'm going to tilt it away because it would just swamp out the camera otherwise. Uh, when you press the button again, then another pair of lights light, press it again more, and then it switches to the sort of focused beam mode, which is a much more directional beam. Then all of them at once, and then the dreaded strobing mode. And for reference, it does not have the SOS mode. If I hold the button in, Nothing. It just shows the uh, the one light comes on. And it's got that thing that as you switch through them, if you stop in one for a length of time, you still have to toggle through all the other modes to turn it off, including the really annoying strobing one. Uh, beam angle. Let me just step back here. So there's the first one on its own. It increases in brightness. That's just the ones adjacent to it lighting. They don't really have much effect, the beam angle. Then it goes to the more focused one, which is not that much wider and is a much harsher, colder light uh, than all of them flush, flashing and off. OK. I also missed a bit of a trick here. You see, I bought this one here and it's listed as having 3000 milliamp hour cells. That's an optional whether you get them or not. The £7.19 price is one of those misleading prices that jumps up to about £14 as soon as you make a selection. But I could, in reality, have gone for this different listing and I could have got 5,800 milliamp hour cells. Oh, I feel cheated. I've got half the capacity, but that's not an issue really because, as we all know, we're not getting 3,000 or 5,800 milliamp hour cells, particularly the 5,800 ones because they don't exist. Uh, I don't think anybody makes cells that capacity except the Chinese in their mind. So the instructions that come with it say super bright, super far, long endurance, drop resistance, waterproof design. I'm not really convinced it's waterproof, but we'll take a look at that in a moment because, of course, I'm going to take it to bits. Warning. Attention. The anode and cathode of the battery when putting it into the battery holder. Do not irradiate the eyes directly as the brightness light will harm the eyes. When the light fails in, please use new powerful battery to replace the old ones. Please take put the battery when the torch will be no use for some time. Excellent. So that uh, covers just about everything. It's interesting to note, it does have a, it's Elfiland as the brand. If you type that into eBay, you will find various products, including dodgy looking solar panels. Um, the SKU, I typed that into Google and found these lights. Typed into eBay, didn't find the lights. Interesting. So let's take it to bits. Let's take a look at the batteries first. So here is the battery pack at the back, and as with most of these things, when you select a light in the front, the back lights as well. It's a sort of little rear indicator to show people where you are, apparently. And it's actually a battery level indicator, which is nice. And if you switch it up to the highest mode, to the point it starts flashing, it draws such a lot of current that even the battery level indicator flashes in time. Nice. Oh, head strap size. I've got a very big head. It fits me just fine. The strap is actually really big. Uh, it's actually still got room to adjust and it's loose. It also has a whistle built on. I, I, I will I blow the whistle hold. I'll step back for a while. Yeah, it's a shitty whistle. You could just completely remove that and bin it. Um, the battery pack has the USB charging port and it, it's very easy to knock the cover off. It's not really what I'd call waterproof, but then neither is the pack because if I open the pack up, there are no rubber seals. It's just plastic to plastic. Initially, I thought there were rubber seals in here because it was black, but it is just hard plastic. And here are the cells, and it does say 3,000 milliamp hours, so they must be 3,000 milliamp hour, except I tested them and it came in at 500 milliamp hour, which is pretty much just the token gesture. Lightweight cells, they feel so light that they normally supply these things. Let's open the battery pack first. So I can see it looks like it clips in here. And I'm expecting a little circuit board central to the back, round about the vicinity of the USB charge socket. Let's budge this side out as well. So we've got three wires going up. Interesting. 
Why three wires? Maybe one of those is the signal that it's on to actually make the LEDs light. This has quite, this must have a charging chip and then a indicator, a chip for controlling the LEDs. So there's the LEDs, they're all going to that chip. Uh, this chip down here is marked with a number. It's marked 4056A. 4056A, which is the bog standard charging chip, but it's good to know it's got that. And odd that it's also got that auxiliary chip there to show the level. That must also be receiving that signal back from the torch itself, the actual front of the unit, to actually turn those LEDs on. Interesting, let's put a battery in and just stick a charger in. So it comes with this little lead. Let's uh, use the lead that came with it. You can get the flashlight or you can get it with the lead and the batteries. It's up to you what you want to do. I ordered it. It came with a message instead saying that it had been returned to them by their shipper and that it would take a while longer to get delivered. Ah, oh, there it is in charging mode. But uh, what they were doing was they were stalling and it came from China despite the fact that I bought it from the UK warehouse, so to speak. So that's it showing this of charging level and it's got the little uh, LEDs down here. A red one to show it's charging and presumably another colour to show it's fully charged. Let's test that. Let's just pop the battery out and see if it does anything. No, it doesn't. Okay, not sure what that LED is for. Maybe it flashes when the battery's going low. Dunno. Oh, that was it going to sleep mode. The power bank. Okie dokie. Right. I shall clip this back on because there's no real point having it off. B plus uh, K and L. Okay, radio. Not sure what those mean. I shall just clip this back in just to keep it out of harm's way. Let's take a look at the headlight itself, which is comfortable, incidentally. It's got this uh, plastic shape that is actually curved. It's not that bad to wear on your head. Looking in the front at the LEDs, I would say that they're all at the same level, which makes sense. I'm guessing in the back of this, there must be a circuit board that's just common with the LEDs all mounted on it. It saves uh, mounting them in separate set of panels. I'm going to have to use this screwdriver to get it off because it's got better reach and they are quite recessed. Not sure if we should be taking this one off or taking the front off. We'll take both off. That's the best bet, isn't it? For completeness. So I wouldn't say the battery compartment's waterproof. I will soon find out if the front is what we'd regard as waterproof. Is there a seal? No, there's not a seal. There's a heat sink with the, the sort of... Uh, well, let's whip that off. One screw holding that on. Whereas there's a position for two screws. I'm guessing this is going to have all the LEDs in it and just it's just going to be a bare set of LED. Yep. Interesting enough. What was that that popped off? Not sure what that was. This is when it's quite handy recording these things so I can find out where to put it back. Uh, the circuit board itself. I kind of expected, I was expecting this to be a circuit board with the circuitry on it, but it's got a little ubiquitous 8-pin chip. It's got, well, how many? It's got four transistors. Uh, the chip might have a number on it. The chip does not have a number on it. That I can see here, tilting at various angles. No, nothing on that chip. It's Anonymous, it's the one of the vague little microcontroller chips. What about the transistors that it's using? A2SHB, A2SHB, little MOSFETs if I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken. That's probably, yes, it is an A2SHB, so completely standard there. Um, I'm guessing the resistors are, yeah, the resistors are 512. Five one two zeros with five point one k. The reason for the resistors, it's not they're not in line with the gates of the MOSFETs. They're across the pulling the basically making sure it turns off completely when this is in sleep mode. And there's a little localized power supply, I'm guessing, or maybe that's D. That is a snubber. 
Oh wait, no it isn't. It is a local power supply decoupling, a little uh, resistor and capacitor just uh, to power the... I'll, I'll take a picture of this circuit board, it's quite interesting. Why am I even, you know, why am I wasting time doing that when I should be taking a picture of these things so we can take a closer look at them? Uh, right, I shall do that now and then we can take a look. That's better. See, this is what I should have done in the first place, but I, I don't know why I didn't uh, just go straight to the big zoom-in picture because it shows so much more detail. So here's the microcontroller in the middle. This is almost certainly going to be one of these little one-time programmable microcontrollers that are very common in Chinese products. They cost typically just a few cents. They're just a mass-produced microcontroller for applications like this. This means that because of the pinout, you could theoretically write your own software for a similar pinned microcontroller and get rid of those flashing effects. That's one of the things that people ask the most is, how can I get rid of the flashing effect? The answer is, in the case of this light, you'd have to reprogram the microcontroller. The transistors, one, two, three, four, are all A2SHB. A2SHB is, let's uh, swamp out here, let's uh, tame this down. That'll tame it down. It's a very common N-channel MOSFET. It's got a low gate voltage of about 2.5 volts. It's rated for about uh, 20 volts. And it has... this The way MOSFETs are rated, typically it won't just be the, the current rating of the MOSFET or its power dissipation. They give you the resistance in its on state. So the resistance from the drain and source in ohms, in this case, with a gate voltage of 4.5 volts, which it won't be getting here because uh, the battery voltage won't be supplying that, it would go down as low as 0.08 ohms. But closer to the supply it will be getting 2.5 volts, it will st still be just about a tenth of an ohm. So th they're amazing. MOSFETs are just fantastic little things. It's quite good to note that these are rated so high. It's a very common... Uh, MOSFET. It's used as a generic transistor in many products, simply because it's cheap. Uh, it's just it's one of those standard transistors. So look at the circuitry. We have the microcontroller. The negative rail here, which goes to all the transistors because they switch to the negative rail, has a capacitor and it also goes to pin 8 of the microcontroller. This is a very common pin out, the negative to pin 8. The positive of the microcontroller goes to pin 1. And it doesn't connect directly to the positive rail. There's a 100 ohm resistor, 101, 10, 1, 0, and 1 as a multiplier. So that gives the 100 ohms, which then feeds down to that decoupling capacitor and then to pin 1. And what that means is that even when there are, are switching spikes, like when the LEDs turn on, or especially when it's pulsing, then that's going to provide a bit of filtering that's going to avoid the processor getting upset by the sort of pulsating voltage. The microcontroller controls the four MOSFETs directly. A pin goes out to each of the gates. These 5-1-2 resistors, 5-1 and 2 zeros, 5.1 thousand ohm resistors, they are just purely, they're connected to the negative rail there to keep it turned off. Um, the, so that's to make sure that uh, any sort of floating voltage in this will definitely not affect these because that's probably when this is put to sleep. It, they may just go floating, I'm guessing. So it's just to make sure the MOSFETs don't partially turn on. There are two input pins. The switch is going to pin 4. Uh, I should say one of them is an output pin. Pin 3 is the indicator. That goes back via the white wire to the battery pack circuit board that's in the back of this. And that's what brings these lights on. So that's just an enable signal going out to those. Whenever you've got any mode, when this is awake, basically, it's powering that up to actually turn the uh, indicator lights on the back of the battery pack. There are a couple of resistors down here, but it's quite odd what they're for. They are very low value resistors. R270 means there's 0.27 ohms, but there's two of them in parallel, so it's point. 135 ohms, which is tiny. I couldn't even measure that with a meter. You'd, you'd need a special low resistance meter for measuring such a low value. The meter leads would have to be nulled out and it'd have to be just accurate equipment. It's a very low value indeed. But the only LEDs it's actually controlling, the limiting the current to, let's uh, bring the LEDs in here. The only ones it's limiting the, limiting the current to are this group of three in the middle. 
I guess it's just purely because when you turn it on at the first setting, this middle one lights and it's just a lower intensity um, and it's a general work light. And after that, the other LEDs in pairs. So this is one circuit one, then two, then three, and then four. They are just being driven straight from the supply. So the only thing limiting the current to those LEDs is the resistance of the tracks, the uh, resistance of the MOSFETs and the resistance of the wiring between the battery pack. It's kind of, it's just a way they're just pushing the LEDs for maximum intensity. And that is it. Uh, not much else to say. The back of the circuit board is just marshalling. It's just the pads going out to this uh, lamp circuit board here. Each of these uh, MOSFETs has a couple of plated through holes going onto a track that then leads to those pads. That's it. They put in another option for another resistor here, but never used it. Yeah, it's really what you'd expect. Uh, that just leaves... Taking the front of this off, because I said I would take it off, and I will take it off. So, I'm just going to unscrew these screws from here. Although I have noticed that uh, I think you can pull the reflectors out from the back. Oh, you can actually. Uh, the two little white discs are off these reflectors here. Possibly just packers to actually hold them at the correct height, just to make the difference up between the extrusion and the plastic. I'm not sure we'll find when we whip this bit off. Is it going to come off? No, it's not going to come off. It's on quite securely. What's holding that on? I think it's just friction. The screws are out. Is it glued? It may be glued. There's a lens out with a little rubber ring. The rubber ring is probably for, I would say it's waterproofing, but I don't think this is very waterproof. That might just be to add a bit of uh, give to actually hold this tightly against the LEDs. Um, this is not coming off easily. I don't know if it's clipped or glued. If I don't get any luck shortly, I shall just give up. Let's see if I can stab myself in the process. That is on very tight. These little things come off as well. What about the reflectors at the risk of damaging them? Will they pop out if I push from the back? Yeah, they're just the same little glass arrangement here. Have I got the little rubber seal again? Yeah, little rubber seal again. Um, I don't really see what's holding this in. I got, I've got a feeling it's either pressed in very tightly or it's got glue in it. I don't think that's going to come out, but it doesn't really matter because the lens has apparently just come out anyway, so it is just a front piece of trim. For completeness, we'll take one of these little dinky lenses out as well. He said scratching the lens horribly, but to be honest, it's not actually a terribly exciting light. I have a favourite light and it's not this one. I've tried this one. It's, it's comfortable, but it's not actually... I mean, it's a gimmick. They could have just done it with just a few LEDs. Uh, that's more or less it. That's all there really is. Are those lenses identical? They are. So the only thing that's really different between them is the size of the emitter and the little plastic thing at the back to actually act as a spacer. I thought those were going to be different. I thought they were going to be somehow more focused. But there we go. That is it. It's quite nice in the sense that it's got that little charging circuit in the back. The batteries are shit. It's not waterproof. It probably is impact proof. It fits nicely on big heads and it's just basically a bit of a pissing match in terms of squeezing as many gimmicky LEDs on as they can. What I do find is a bit odd is the fact that circuit board was basically just shoved in there out the way and then the, th the front screwed on it. I thought that was quite odd. But there we go. Uh, that's the... What, what's the name of it again? Effling or F... Hold on. It's the... Uh, I've completely forgotten the Elfland. That reminds me of the Efteling for some reason. But uh, there we go. It's it's neat enough. It works. It's comfortable. It's what it is. It's an interesting light, but a bit gimmicky.